Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to this video, section 4.4, Trig Equations. It's a two-part video. Part one will be linear and part two will be quadratic. So what we're going to learn how to do is, in this video, algebraically solve first degree trig equations in radians and degrees, verify a specific solution to a trig equation, and identify exact and approximate solutions as well as general solutions. So in this video, again, we're looking at linear equations. So how to solve a linear equation is to get variable on one side, number on the other. The variable in this case is attached to a trig function. So we want to isolate the trig function on one side, number on the other. And then state all your solutions within the domain. The domain will be specified in the question. If the domain is not specified, you must state a general solution. So to find a general solution, you need to find the period of the trig function that we're talking about, and then state all the solutions between zero and that period, adding on multiples of the period. And of course, most important part about solving any question is the check. So always check your solution on the calculator. Make sure you're in the correct mode when you do that. So sometimes we're going to have restricted domains. They can be written in inequality or interval notation. So inequality notation, as in the first example here, would be theta is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to 360 degrees. That just means it's in between zero and 360. Now, if I wanted to write that in interval notation, I would say it's between zero and 360. And notice I have those square brackets, which lock the answer in, meaning it includes it. So pay attention to any restricted domains in the question. Okay, let's try this first one. So two sine x minus one equals zero in between zero and 360. So my tip for you here is to find an exact solution. That tells you right away it's one of those nice points on the unit circle. Okay, so as soon as I hear exact solution, I know it's on the unit circle. One of those nice points. So let's start off, first of all, by isolating our trig function. So I have 2 sine x. Instead of minus 1, I add 1 to both sides. And then I will divide both sides by 2. So I get sine of x equals 2 a half. Now, thinking about the unit circle, let's do this in two parts. First of all, looking at our unit circle, sine, the y-coordinate, is positive, sine is positive, in quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. Okay, so you can use that using the y-coordinate, or if you remember the cast rule, we can use the cast rule as well, and you can see that sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So either way, we get the correct answer for 1 and 2. Then we look at sine a half. So sine is your y-coordinate. I'm dealing with degrees, so when sine is equal to a half, whether you use the hand trick or the unit circle, you know that the reference angle for a half, sine is a half at 30 degrees. Okay, so now that I know the reference angle and the quadrants that the angles are in, I know what my answers are. So my answer, oh, it's actually not an uh, theta, it's an x. Let me put it back there. Let's answer it using the variable they asked us for. So x is equal to 30 degrees, that's my quadrant one angle, or in quadrant number two, it would be 150 degrees. And I got that answer by doing 180 minus my reference angle. So it looks like my solution is 30 degrees and 150 degrees. Those are the only solutions between zero and 360. So looking at the check, I can just simply place replace x in my original equation with the answer so you can see 2 sine 30 minus 1 is 0 and 2 sine 150 is also minus 0 so i know i did it correctly okay let's try this one again i'm looking for an exact solution which means it's on one of those nice points on the unit circle this time i'm looking at radians okay so cotan of theta or x is equal to negative root three so let's start first of all by looking at where is cotan negative 
Well, cotan is negative anywhere tan is negative. So let's think about where tan is negative. So that's the ratio of y over x for tan or x over y for cotan. I think in this case here, it's easier just to look at the cast rule. So looking at the cast rule, cotan and tangent are negative in quadrants number two and quadrant number four. So now that I know what quadrants I'm looking in, I need to find my reference angle. So cotan is equal to the ratio of cosine over sine. So cotan is the ratio of cosine over sine, which is your x-coordinate over your y-coordinate. So that means that I am looking for a coordinate on the unit circle that has root 3 for my cosine and a half for my sine because then you can see that cosine over sine is root three okay so since it's in quadrant number two so quadrant number two it would have the coordinates of negative root three over two and a half and if i was looking in quadrant number four it would have coordinates of root three over two and negative a half so i just have to find the angle that goes with that so my angle here, first of all, I can figure out my reference angle. My reference angle, uh, where I have coordinates root 3 over 2 and a half, would be 30 degrees or pi over 6. So in quadrant number 2, let's use our trick for radians. In quadrant number 2, the numerator is 1 less than the denominator, so that would be 5 pi over 6. And in quadrant number four, it's double one less. The numerator is double one less the denominator. So that would be 11 pi over six. Okay, so I've got my solutions up to two pi, but it could also be from negative pi to two pi. So the two pi we've already got, that's just one positive rotation of the unit circle. And we've got both of those answers. Negative pi means I'm doing a half turn in this direction and I know that there's a solution right here in quadrant number four so that solution would just simply be negative the reference angle because it goes in the opposite direction so in this direction I have the reference angle here I have the numerator is one less than the denominator here the numerator is one more than the denominator here it is double one less when I go in a clockwise rotation for negative angles it's just the opposite this is the reference angle this is one less this is one more this is double one less okay so it looks like my solutions if I just put them in order is going to be negative pi over 6 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Those would be your solutions altogether. So again, I want to go and check. There is not a cotan button on the calculator. So what I did is I did 1 over 10. So there's my negative pi over 6, my 5 pi over 6, and my 11 pi over 6. They were all supposed to equal to negative root 3, which is about negative 1.7. And you can see for each of them, negative pi over 6 works, 5 pi over 6 works, and 11 pi over 6 works. So I'm good to go. So really important that you guys check all of your questions, especially in this chapter. Okay, let's try this one here. So I want to solve 2 sine x minus root 3 equals 0 in degrees. Now notice there is no domain specified. So no domain specified means I'm looking at a general solution. So looking at sine x, the period of sine x is 360 degrees. So I'm going to find all of the solutions from 0 to 360. And then I'm going to add on multiples of the period. So to do that, we have 2 sine x, add root 3 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, and I get that sine of x is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay, so two things going on here. First of all, sine positive. Sine is positive, the y-coordinate of the unit circle in quadrants 1 or 2. Or you can also look at it using your cast rule. So whichever way you feel more comfortable, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, as long as I know that I have solutions in quadrant one and quadrant two. Okay, next thing I need to look at is my reference angle. So which um, degree has a sine value of root three over two? 
So my reference angle is going to be, so whether you use the hand trick or you look for that Y coordinate uh, that is root three over two, either way is fine. I'm dealing with 60 degrees. Okay, so use the hand trick or your unit circle, you know that it's 60 degrees. So I know that my first solution in quadrant number one is going to be 60 degrees and I add on multiples of the period, which is 360. My second solution is going to be in quadrant two. So in quadrant two, if I have a reference angle of 160, so in quadrant number two, it's going to be 180 minus my reference angle. So it will be 120 degrees plus multiples of 360. And then I just want to state that N is an integer. In other words, I can have positive rotations and negative rotations, clockwise and counterclockwise angles. So those would be my solutions in general form in degrees. So to check that, if it's true for 60, it's going to be true for 60 plus 360. If it's true for 120, it will be true for 120 plus 360. And you can see both of those when I substitute in, I get zero for both, so I know that I am correct. Okay, let's try this one here again. General solution because uh, no domain is specified, and this time we'll do it in radians. Okay, so no domain specified. We're looking at a general solution. Now, this time the period of pi is, or sorry, the period of tan is pi. So I only have to look at solutions from zero to pi. So let's isolate tangent here. So I'm going to have tan of x subtract 1 from both sides is negative 1. So I need to look at, first of all, where is tan negative? And tan is negative. I think for tan and cotan, I always use my cast rule. It's a little bit easier. So tan is negative in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4. But because the period of 10 is just pi, I just have to look at this quadrant here. Okay, so I don't have to worry about anything down here because I just add on multiples of the period and then I'll get to that answer eventually. Okay, so I know that it is in quadrant number two and I want to look at when 10 is 1. So my reference angle, 10 is the ratio. So 10 is the ratio of sine over cosine. So for tan to equal 1, sine and cosine have to have the same value. The only angle measure where sine and cosine have the same angle is a 45 degree reference angle or a pi over 4 because those are both root 2 over 2. And root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 is 1. So I know my reference angle is pi over 4 and it's in quadrant number 2. So remember in quadrant number 2, my numerator is 1 less than my denominator. So my answer is 3 pi over 4, and I'll add on a multiple of the period where n is an integer. In other words, I can have positive and negative rotations, clockwise and counterclockwise angles. So that would be your answer. So again, you go and check, make sure you're in radians this time. So 10 of 3 pi over 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So I know I've done that right. And I could do 3 pi over 4 plus a pi, and I would get into quadrant number 4, and it would also work. So let's recap general solutions. Okay, for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant, they all have a period of 360 when b is 1. Okay, or 2 pi. So there's going to be two general solutions. When b equals 1, tan and cotan have a period of 180 or pi, so there will just be one general solution, adding on multiples of 180 or pi. So just pay attention to the base function and what the period is. You find solutions from 0 to the period, and then add on multiples of the period. Uh -huh. So to summarize my lesson, when solving linear trig equations, get the trig ratio on one side, the number on the other. Once it's isolated, take the inverse trig function of the ratio to find the angle or use your unit circle. Okay, so if it's one of those exact values. State all your answers within the domain. If no domain is specified, find a general solution. So from zero to the period, adding on multiples of the period. And the most important step of any solving equation is the check. No point in doing a question if you're not going to check to see if you're right. So here's a unique way of signing 
uh, solving uh, an equation, which I do not want you to do, 1 over n times sine of x equals, uh, canceling out the n's and then saying that the answer must be 6.